Israel and Saudi Arabia relations is also a hot topic all over the world. Anytime you go anywhere in the world, you could find a place. Saudi Arabia has recently gotten a lot of attention for having surprising ties to Christianity and Judaism. This is because it is home to the two holiest cities in Islam. Mount Sinai is a very important spiritual place for Jews, and the search for it has become linked to this well-known Islamic state. In a strange turn of events, atheists have found one of the world's best-kept secrets that has been mentioned in the Bible for thousands of years. What is this secret, and how did someone find it in Saudi Arabia many years later? Come with us as we talk about what shocking things atheists have recently found in Saudi Arabia. The story in the Bible has had a huge impact on the views and cultures of people all over the world for hundreds of years. However, scholars and theologians have long struggled with how to prove certain claims and places mentioned in the Bible. One of these mysterious places is Mount Sinai, which is also known as the Mountain of Moses. People have long thought that this holy rock is where Moses got the Ten Commandments from God, as recorded in the Hebrew Bible. Exodus 19.20. The search for the real Mount Sinai has, as expected, been the focus of explorers and experts for hundreds of years. For many years, most people thought that Jebel Musa in the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula was Mount Sinai. However, some atheists have recently made an unexpected discovery that connects the holy mountain to Saudi Arabia, giving us a new viewpoint. Even though this discovery might not seem likely, there is more and more evidence to back this claim. This could reveal a long-kept secret that the Saudi government has been trying to keep secret. Before getting into these new results though, it's important to know what Mount Sinai means. In the Bible, Mount Sinai is also called Mount Horeb. It is very important to the Abrahamic faiths of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. According to Jewish belief, Mount Sinai is the holy place where God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses directly, as told in the book of Exodus. After taking the Israelites out of Egypt as slaves, Moses went to the top of Mount Sinai and talked to God for 40 days and nights. These were the times when God gave the Jewish people the rules and commandments that would guide their religious and moral lives. For Christians, Mount Sinai is also linked to the story in the Bible about how Moses received the Ten Commandments. This event is very important in both Judaism and Christianity because it set up the covenant between God and the Israelites. This covenant shaped Christian views about law, covenant, and divine revelation in the years that followed. The New Testament also talks about Mount Sinai as the place where the prophet Elijah went to hide after running away from Queen Jezebel. Mount Sinai is called Jabal Musa in Islam, which means the Mountain of Moses. It is thought to be the exact spot where Moses got divine messages from Allah, God. Now hurry up. If this is your first time on my channel, I will be happy if you like this video. This way you can help me continue to spread the Christian message. Subscribe and click the notification ringtone so you won't miss any of the next videos. We'll be uploaded every day. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go. Islamic legend says that Moses went up this mountain to talk to Allah directly and get advice for himself and his people. The story of Moses and Mount Sinai is told in many places in the Quran, which shows how important it is in Islamic religion. It has been debated and discussed by scholars and writers for a long time about exactly where Mount Sinai is. When Christianity was young, Mount Sinai was a very important place for travelers to go, both as a symbol and a real place. These tourists wanted to see the places where the holy stories and events in the Hebrew Bible took place. The need to connect with the holy is what led to the start of Christian monasticism in the 4th century CE. Monks who wanted to be alone and live a life devoted to God began to flock to Mount Sinai. People in Christianity wanted to get away from material things and focus more on spiritual goals. This monastic movement was part of a bigger trend in that direction. 
for Emperor Justinian Bam to honor Mount Sinai's spiritual importance, he had St. Catherine's Monastery, also called the Monastery of the Transfiguration, built between 548 and 565 CE. This monastery, which was at the base of Mount Sinai, was very important for keeping Christian history and old books alive. The Codex Sinaiticus, one of the oldest known versions of the Bible, is kept in St. Catherine's Monastery, along with many other old books. Scholars hold this manuscript in very high regard. It gives us important information about how Bible texts changed over time. The monastery's strategic position close to the site where Moses is thought to have seen the burning bush adds to its mystery and importance. Many years of work went into building St. Catherine's Monastery and keeping old books safe there. This shows how spiritually and historically important Mount Sinai is. It is well known that Mount Sinai has religious and historical importance. However, new discoveries by atheists that connect the holy mountain to Saudi Arabia have shocked people all over the world. At this point, both atheists and scholars are asking important questions to get a better grasp on these discoveries. One important question that comes up is where Mount Sinai really is and what was done to find it. Many people have different ideas about where Mount Sinai is. This has been going on for a long time. There are many things that make it hard to figure out where it is geographically. The fact that there are several mountains named Mount Sinai in different parts of the world is an important one. One can be found in the Sinai Peninsula of Egypt and another can be found in Saudi Arabia. As you might expect, having more than one mountain with the same name can cause confusion and disagreements when people talk about where they are. Adding to the difficulty is the fact that historical reports and religious texts sometimes give confusing or conflicting details about where Mount Sinai is. There may not be enough information because of missing records, different cultural views, or even on purpose hiding information. Researchers and scholars have used a variety of methods and tactics to try to solve this mystery. To find answers to this long-standing mystery, they look at old records, dig up artifacts, use maps and information from other sources, and compare what they find. Now, let's look at an interesting alternative idea put forward by researcher Professor Emmanuel Anadi. Most people think that Mount Sinai is in the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula. However, Anadi says that it might be in the Negev Desert, which is in the southern part of Israel today. The idea behind Anadi's theory comes from a lot of research and study done at rock art sites in both the Sinai Peninsula and the Negev Desert. He thought that the rock art in these areas was made by the same old culture because it had a lot in common with other art from the same time period. These similarities include not only the style of art, but also the topics and symbols shown in the rock art. His point of view on the geography and topography of the Negev Desert gives Anati's idea even more weight. He thinks that these traits are more in line with how Mount Sinai is described in the Bible than with the traditional location in the Sinai Peninsula. According to Professor Emmanuel Anati, the Negev Desert would have been a better place for a big group of people to camp out for a long time just like the Bible says they did. Professor Menashe Har El, a geographer and biblical researcher from Israel, has agreed with Anati's idea. To back up Anati's point, Professor Har El looked into the Bible very carefully and found many accounts and hints that point to the Negev Desert as a possible place for Mount Sinai. He carefully looked at parts of the book of Exodus, like the first and second lines of Exodus chapter 3, which talk about Moses taking care of sheep near Horeb, which is called the Mountain of God. Harel said that this description fits the geography of the southern part of the Negev Desert, where sheep can find good places to graze. The professor brought up Jebel Karam, a mountain in the middle Negev, to show how the southern Negev Desert's natural traits match up with what the Bible says about Mount Sinai. This mountain looks like a volcanic peak, 
Just like the Bible says Mount Sinai was covered in smoke and fire, Professor Har El also looked into other biblical connections to Mount Sinai. In particular, he looked at Exodus 19, 1 and 2, which say that the Israelites came to Sinai after leaving Rephidim and going through the Sinai Desert. Harel suggested that Pharaon Oasis, a place in the middle Negev, might be the right place to find Rephidim. His idea says that this would put Sinai close to Rephidim, which supports his hypothesis even more. Professor Harel also carefully looked at archaeological evidence in the Negev area, noting a lot of old sites that might have something to do with the events in the Bible that happened at Mount Sinai. Sarabit el Kadim is one of these places. It is in the southern part of the central Negev, and was once a center for religious activities and a copper mine. Harel said that Sarabit el Kadim is related to Mount Sinai, because the remains of it and old texts that talk about a holy mountain sound a lot alike. As expected, there were people who didn't agree, like Charles Tilstone Beck, a British explorer, geographer, and biblical researcher who lived in the 1800s. At first, Becke thought that Mount Sinai was in the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula, close to where the town of Al-Tur is now. Based on his study of ancient texts and his interpretation of the Bible's descriptions of places, he came up with this idea. In his book, the late Dr. Charles Beck's discoveries of Sinai in Arabia and of Midian, which came out after his death in 1874, Beck presented his most daring idea about Mount Sinai in 1871. He wrote in this piece that Mount Sinai was not on the Sinai Peninsula, but in the northwest of Saudi Arabia, close to Jebel al-Laws. Beck used different pieces of proof to back up his case. According to the Book of Exodus, Mount Sinai is described in great detail. He first carefully looked at these descriptions and compared them to the traditional spot in the southern Sinai Peninsula. He came to the conclusion that there were big differences between what the Bible said and the real geography of the place where it happened. Second, Beck looked closely at the accounts of early Christian pilgrims who had been to the area. He found that their descriptions of the scenery were more like those from northwest Saudi Arabia than the Sinai Peninsula. Beke also looked at the ancient maps that were described in the Bible and said that Midian, the area where Moses went to find safety and married Zipporah according to the Bible, was in the northwest of Saudi Arabia. A small group of researchers and explorers agree with Beck's idea, which got some attention. Many people still don't agree with his idea, and it's not widely accepted in the academic world. Other scholars and researchers eventually had a lot of doubts and problems with Beck's idea. They have refused and closely looked at his interpretations of biblical texts and archaeological finds, saying they are biased or wrong. Scholars and researchers are still arguing about where exactly Mount Sinai is, even though his idea is very convincing. Soon after, an American researcher named Ron Wyatt came up with an interesting but controversial idea. Without taking into account what most other theories thought, Wyatt suggested that Mount Sinai might be in Jebel al a mountain in western Saudi Arabia. The idea behind Wyatt's theory came from how he read Exodus 3.1, which says that Moses took care of Jethro's flocks in the land of Midian. The Israelites thought that since Jethro was a priest of Midian, the mountain of God that Moses saw must also be in Midian. Wyatt used different pieces of evidence he had found to back up his claim. In particular, he pointed out a large group of granite rocks near the base of the mountain that were decorated with petroglyphs of Egyptian-style cows and bulls. Wyatt said that these petroglyphs were only found in Saudi Arabia and were probably pieces of the great temple of Israel that was at the base of Mount Sinai. They may have something to do with the story of the golden calf. Wyatt said that he had found the Red Sea crossing by chance in 1978 while he was still exploring. It was in a place called Nuaba in the Gulf of Aqaba, which is the eastern branch of the Red Sea. Based on this find, 
he came to the conclusion that the real Mount Sinai must be east of the Red Sea crossing in western Saudi Arabia. This is a perfect picture of Jebel al-Laws, the highest peak in the whole mountain range in western Saudi Arabia. In 1984, Wyatt and his two kids went on a dangerous trip to learn more about and record what they found in the area around Jebel al-Laws, but their bold plan was suddenly put on hold when they were caught by Saudi authorities. Not only were their pictures taken away, but they were also held for 78 days on suspicion of being Israeli spies. Not giving up, Wyatt later went back to the area legally to look for the Mountain of God and find any possible Egyptian treasures that might be hiding there. During his travels, Wyatt said he found important things, like pieces of Pharaoh's chariots at the bottom of the Red Sea, a burned-out mountain peak that was seen as a sign of God's fire, and a huge rock formation called Split Rock that looks like a strong stream of water. Also, 12 stone blocks found below the mountain seem to match up with parts of the Bible story of what happened at Mount Sinai. Many scholars are skeptical of Wyatt's research, even though it has sparked a lot of interest. They say that his findings are not supported by strong archaeological evidence. Wyatt has gotten a lot of bad press because he didn't share his results in reputable scientific journals or let other scientists look over them. His use of divining rods and dowsing techniques, which are not accepted as true archaeological methods by experts, has also made it harder for people to accept his ideas. This is why a clear position for Mount Sinai, a holy place, has not been clearly established. Scholars and experts are still having trouble with the fact that there is still no clear answer or agreement on the subject. The search for the real Mount Sinai is still a strange and interesting one, which makes us want to learn more about history and do more thorough archaeological research. Let's also look at the different ideas about where Mount Sinai is located. Different points of view have been formed about Mount Sinai's meaning and importance, each based on its nature and interpretation. There is a school of thought that says Mount Sinai is a real rock in Egypt, in the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula. People who think this should take the Bible stories about Moses getting the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai at face value. They say that the literal presence of the mountain gives the holy story a sense of being real and tangible. Another school of thought, on the other hand, sees Mount Sinai in a more symbolic way. This point of view says that Mount Sinai is more of a spiritual trip or a state of divine revelation than a real place. Supporters of this view stress that the biblical story is meant to be understood in a symbolic way, and they say that Mount Sinai is a strong representation of the meeting between people and God. They say that the majestic peak of the mountain and the awe-inspiring presence of God at its top show how religious meetings can go beyond and change people. Another view combines parts of the literal and symbolic meanings, suggesting that Mount Sinai might have been a real rock that was the setting for a very important spiritual event. According to this point of view, the mountain's physical presence grounds the religious story in historical fact, while its symbolic meaning gives the event a deeper meaning. From this point of view, the interaction between the real and the spiritual is seen, giving a more complete picture of Mount Sinai's meaning and essence. No matter what point of view you have, Mount Sinai still makes people feel awe and respect. Its connection to heavenly revelation and the giving of the Ten Commandments has made it an important part of religious and cultural history. Many people of different religions come to the area to connect with the spiritual energy they think this holy mountain gives off. For deep reflection and thought, the Sinai Peninsula's rough beauty, with its tall mountains and wide fields, makes a great background. During the search for Mount Sinai, an amazing find was made in Saudi Arabia. 
which makes this already amazing trip even more important. Even though it might have seemed pointless to try to find the exact site of Mount Sinai, the researchers' work was not for nothing. When paleontologists went on expeditions and found fossils, they made an amazing find that gave them a fascinating look into the past. Some of these fossils were surprising because they were from animals that live in water, like alligators, seahorses, and even hippos. This interesting discovery suggests that Saudi Arabia was once a land full of green plants and healthy bodies of water. It's interesting to think about how this beautiful scenery changed into the dry desert it is now. How did this change take place? In what ways did such a big change happen? To fully understand how important these fossil finds are, it is necessary to look into Saudi Arabia's long geological past, which goes back hundreds of millions of years. The area we now call Saudi Arabia was once a part of the supercontinent Gondwana. Over time, the temperature and geography of Gondwana changed in very big ways. During some times, like the late Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras. A lot of the land that is now desert was underwater for long periods of time. Fossilization, the process by which biological matter is replaced by minerals and stored in sedimentary rock, tells us a lot about how life on Earth changed over time. When looking at remains of specific animals like crocodiles and seahorses, it's important to think about the conditions in which these animals lived and thrived. Even though crocodiles usually live in fresh water or salt water, they can also live in marine habitats. Seahorses, on the other hand, can only live in water. This means that Saudi Arabia probably used to have both fresh water and salt water sources of water, like lakes, rivers, and seas. The fact that these different water ecosystems live together in the area makes these results even more interesting. In the past few years, Saudi Arabia has become an important place for paleontological study because it has a lot of different types of rock formations that are good for keeping fossils alive. Scientists have found interesting remains of crocodiles from the Miocene period, which lasted from about 23 million years ago to 5 million years ago. These results back up the idea that the Arabian Peninsula used to have lush forests and water systems that were perfect for these kinds of species. There aren't many fossils of seahorses found around the world because they are small and their bones are fragile, so they don't last long. Although some parts of Saudi Arabia were buried under the ancient Tethys Ocean, this means that marine life including ancestors of seahorses, may have done well in those waters. There needs to be more study and investigation before fossils of seahorses can be found in Saudi Arabia. The fossils found in Saudi Arabia open up new areas of scientific study and understanding. They give us looks into the environments and animals that lived millions of years ago. As scientists dig deeper into Saudi Arabia's geological wonders, they may find more interesting clues that shed light on the past and show the hidden stories of life on Earth. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.